Happy quarantine, everybody. <laughs> you know, you gotta you gotta laugh during all of this stuff at some point. I'm not laughing, you know, at people being sick, even dying. I'm not laughing at that. I'm just laughing at the fact that, you know, we have to do hard things right now, like stay at home and actually do a teaching series on how to manage our time during quarantine. I mean, you know, the worst case scenario is it could probably be like some of those shows that we watch, you know, like starts out with a virus, ends with people being zombies. <laughs> hey, this is, uh, this is not that difficult. Uh, however, I know that it is a real issue and I realize that that many of you guys are are wrestling with this issue, but I think that this is not an issue of uh, that we're facing just right now. I think that, that this is an issue that is symptomatic of something that was going on beforehand. I think that this could be uh, something that you could address right now that could impact the future and will impact the future if you do it wisely. So uh, we're going to be talking about how to manage your time during the quarantine, during the time whenever you're stuck at home. Uh, I know a lot of you guys watching or will be watching if you're watching this on replay, you're teachers or you are farmers, you're in the banking industry, maybe you're like my wife, you're in uh, vision care or you're in dental care, that kind of thing. So some of you, uh, you involuntarily, involuntarily got put on quarantine you know you got put on this leave of absence you know and some of you just you you're teachers and so you're kind of, you're kind of rejoicing uh, with the rest of all of our kids in jackson county and beyond uh that there is no school right now so i don't know what the repercussions of all that's going to be but we're going to find out sooner rather than later i hope uh but it looks like april 30th is when everything's aiming to kick back off uh, but we'll see about that. Hey, if you got your Bible with you, we're in Ephesians chapter 5, just covering a couple of verses that really speak to this issue. And that is the issue of time, evil, and how to make the most of it. So Ephesians chapter 5, verses 15 and 16. These verses mean a lot to me. Uh, these verses were some verses throughout my history, walking with Christ, that God has very clearly spoken to me uh, personally. I mean, God speaks to us whenever we open his word and we read it and interpret it correctly and we apply it correctly. God is speaking. He's actively speaking all the time uh, when we're in his word. But there are times when God will pull out a specific, uh, Joe David Smith calls these nuggets. Many of you are familiar with that terminology, but these types of things happen and this was one of mine. Uh, throughout the years, and that is these verses. Look carefully, then, how you walk, not as unwise, but as wise, making the best use of the time. He didn't say your time. He said the time. Because the days are evil. Therefore, do not be foolish, but understand what the will of the Lord is. There's a lot packed into those two verses. And uh, I know that many of you have probably read these before. Maybe you're familiar with these already, but I'm not going to add anything to them. There's nothing really new to learn here, so I'm not adding anything to God's Word. It's sufficient in and of itself. But I think that this quote will kind of bring to light what God is trying to say to us. Someone once said, when the pilot does not know what port he is heading for, no wind is the right wind. When the pilot of a ship doesn't know what port he is heading for, no wind is the right wind. What is he saying? It's better to be at a standstill than to travel aimlessly. It's better to be going nowhere than to actually be traveling somewhere not knowing where you want to go. Well, you know, now we're in this particular instance where we're in quarantine and there's nowhere to go. I mean, it's like you got four walls around you and you got your kids. And if you're like me, 
this is all you got left and you're just trying your best to pull what's left of it out. I mean, it's, it drives you insane. I was talking uh, to a person at lunch uh, just about an hour ago and uh, he was like, man, you enjoying being at home? I'm like, look, bro, there's windows in my house and in this office, there are no windows. There's a reason that I leave my house and I come to this office to work. Uh, and it's because of those blessings at home, the blessing that we have, and we call them children. Well, sometimes you get tired of children. I just hate to say it, but hey, I'm speaking it for a lot of people. So when it comes to this thing where we're in quarantine, what's the course of action? I mean, how do we tell our kids to manage time? What are we going to tell them about how to manage time. Well, they're also watching us on how we manage our time during this time of quarantine. Hashtag stay at home. Well, I want to say this. These two verses are saying this. When we spend time wisely, we spend time rightly. When we spend time wisely, we spend time rightly. So I'm going to have you do these, these two things uh, throughout these two verses, and that is uh, take inventory. Right now, it starts with just analyzing. Take inventory of your time and your habits and see if they answer this one question. Is the time that I'm spending wise? If what I'm doing to fill the time that God has given me, if I can categorize that as wise time, then that is how we know we're spending it rightly. Well, how do we know if we're... Uh, how do we know if we're spending it wisely? Well, I'm glad you asked. Where do we get wisdom? It comes from the Bible. If I had a Bible with me, hashtag sinner, I didn't bring my Bible to work today and I work at a church, so bada bing, yay for that. Well, I didn't bring one with me today, otherwise I'd hold it up and say, this is, just imagine Bible here, this is where we get wisdom. It comes from God's Word, and a lot of wisdom is packed. God's packed a lot of wisdom and a lot of knowledge into the book of Proverbs and into the book of Ecclesiastes, but it's spread all throughout Scripture. And the book of Colossians says that the treasury of wisdom and knowledge is found in Christ. So we find wisdom and knowledge in Jesus Christ. So, first things first, take inventory. Take inventory. Now, I want to keep everything in context here. you got to follow me here so you'll understand. Of what Paul is saying. Paul the Apostle is writing to the church at Ephesus. Pretty good, solid church overall. Very encouraging letter, very warm letter uh, that he's writing here. But in chapter 4, he's addressing this practical issue of unholy living. You know, he's drawing this line in between unholy and holy. Rebellion versus obedience. Old self versus new self. And he's using a lot of this language personal pronouns like you, your. He's saying, you were once darkness, but now you are light, so walk in the light. You were once uh, walking in your trespasses, dead in your sin, but now you are in Christ. So he's using this type of language to draw this distinction that you and I, if we are in Christ, that there, there's this, there should be this difference. There should be this difference about us uh, that, that is holy and no longer desiring unholy, that is, desiring to be obedient, no longer desiring to be in rebellion. Uh, this desire to put on the new self and to do away with the old self. That's, that's kind of the mindset that he's in. So when you get into chapter 5, which leads into the verses we're in, he's, he's talking about this new self. He's talking about living as the new self. So here's how we do it in relation to time. In these two verses, he's talking about the use of time in the midst of an evil age filled with opportunity of evil. Well, the first thing that we've got to do is take careful inventory and plan wisely. Now, I know, I know that it is so much more attractive if I were to get on this Facebook Live and say, you need to plan and you need to get your planners out, get your calendars out, get Get everything, get your emails open, open them up right now, and let's make a plan. That's much more practical, but it's not so practical, not so simple to say, well, let's take careful inventory on our lives. That's the hard thing, but that's the necessary thing because God is after the heart. And if we can tackle the heart, we can tackle the rest of life. So 
Look at verse 15. Look carefully. I'm going to break down some words here. As you know, I'm accustomed to doing. You may not like that. Uh, you may click away from this video and go to the next one that may be better than that, and that's okay. But we're going to look at these words a little closely because I think it does help us understand uh, what we're looking at here. Look at this real quick. If you look right here, this right here where I'm circling my mouse, this little thing in my Bible study software breaks down where these words are used. Now, in this particular instance, when he says look, it's this word blepo, to see. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to maximize that a little bit. So it doesn't just mean to see with the eyes, though. It means something more than that. This same word that Paul used in Greek is the same word that was used like here, elsewhere, where Jesus says, but I say to you that everyone who looks at a woman with lustful intent. You see that? It's not just this. It's not just this look with the eyes. You know, it's this intentional look. You know, the look, the physical act is driving it's being driven by the intent of the heart so let's go back if you see he says who looks or you can see also this word beware that jesus used in others when it says watch out beware of the leaven of the pharisees and the leaven of heaven of herod he's talking about be watchful be careful don't just look at them and see them with your eyes. You need to look at them, see them with your eyes, and be careful. Take note. You get in the picture? There's something really, really, really big going on here that, that you might not see on the surface, and that were, that's where Paul is saying, look, look carefully with intention. Look carefully. Look carefully. 1 Corinthians 3 verse 10 talks about this as well, where you know we need to be careful about our our surroundings and who influences us. Uh, you might have heard this word before, circumspectly. Uh, the King James version of the scriptures uses that. The translation of King James uses that word quite often. And literally that breaks down into two halves. Circum, meaning around, circular, and then spect, to look. So look around you, be looking around, be aware of your surroundings, to look with intention around you. Uh, us tactical guys that like to carry pistols on us. What do we do? We're we're living circumspectly. We don't let our back sit to the door. We face the door so we can see if there's a threat coming in. So there's that careful observation. That's what he's saying here. Look carefully. Look with sense. Be deliberate. Live in a manner of accuracy about your life. Don't just live aimlessly. Don't just go, well, whatever today brings, today brings. Because today is a day in which God has literally made, the sun has literally risen again, uh, COVID-19 has literally still had its stranglehold on all the nations of the world currently because God allowed it to be so. It's no surprise. If we're going to be consistent and believe that God is sovereign, then he's sovereign over this, and therefore we must walk very carefully. I, I want to draw this out too. In Luke chapter 1, uh, Luke was not an apostle. Now, you need to hear this. Luke didn't walk with Christ like the rest of them. Luke came in after Christ had been resurrected and gone. So what he wanted to do is, being the historian that he was, he wanted to compile all the different accounts from the apostles and put it into one manuscript, one cohesive unit, and give it to this guy named Theophilus. Don't know who it was, many speculations about who he was, but nonetheless, Luke's intent was to put together a trust, a trustworthy eyewitness account, because Luke was a believer as well, a disciple, and he put this account together in Luke chapter 1, verse 3, he says, I, with great care, well, can you guess what word was in the Greek? The word blepo. The same word used right here in our verses, with great intention, with great care, I put together all these accounts together. Accuracy. Look carefully then how you walk. Look carefully then how you practice life. Look carefully then how your methods are being carried out. Look carefully then how you exercise your thinking. After all, if thoughts determine actions, and they do, then philosophies determine lifestyles. You, no matter if you're a believer in Christ or not, 
you're living by philosophies. Every one of you out there listening to my voice, you've got a philosophy about business. You've got a philosophy about family life. You've got a philosophy about sports. You've got a philosophy about hobbies. You've got a philosophy about fishing. You've got a philosophy about money. You've got a philosophy about everything. And those philosophies are systems of how we think about things. And those systems are filled with truth. Sometimes could be filled with error, a lot of times filled in with opinion, sometimes filled in with knowledge. And so we put those moving parts together to give us philosophy. Well, Paul is going after that and saying, look carefully how you walk. Be careful. Be careful how you live. Be careful what philosophy you let drive your life. That's why he's going to say, not as unwise. Be careful how you walk. Not as unwise, but as wise. Now, we're going to get geeky with the Greek here again. Are you ready for that roller coaster? Join me over here, would you? Now, when we go over here, I want you to notice something. When he says here, these, this tool right here breaks down the words, and I'm not going to go on in the details of that. But look at this. The word wise is sophos. Now, which look, look what he does here. When he uses the word unwise, it's a sophos. Hmm. What is he doing there? Well, one is wisdom and one is anti-wisdom, which is why the A is there. It's A to symbolize opposition, the anti, the opposite. So what he's saying here is he's saying don't live as anti-wise, but live as pro-wise. Don't, don't be anti-wisdom, be pro-wisdom. And again, where do we get wisdom from? Hmm, you guessed it, from the scriptures. We let God tell us what truth is. We let God tell us what money is. We let God tell us what hobbies are. We let God tell us what free time is. We let God tell us what work time looks like. We let God tell us about what quiet time looks like. We let God tell us about everything. So don't live as unwise, but as wise. And literally that Greek word means accumulated knowledge that's put to use and it reveals itself as skill and wisdom. Be people who carefully, carefully, intently watch how they live. And they do this filled with skillful wisdom. Like they're always building on it. They're always refining the process. They, they're never satisfied with how uh, they're living. Now, before we move to the practical things, because I'm sure that you're like, please move to the, give me some help. Well, self-analysis, as a person said, can be stifling. You got to be careful with self-analysis if you do it out of balance. But he says this, but Christians, I'm, now hear this, but Christians cannot expect to succeed in life with God without being honest with themselves and God about their chosen destiny. Any traveler who's inattentive to direction and progress will never arrive at their destination. Now I'm going to read this first half again. It can be stifling if you do too much self-analysis. You don't, you don't need to be you know, paralysis by analysis. I can do that. I'm bad about that. But Christians also on the flip side can't expect to succeed in life with God without being honest with themselves and God about their chosen destiny. You can't move along until you're in agreement with God about where you're going. And that includes quarantine time because quarantine time Again, God has given it to us for a reason, and I think he's doing a lot of work, which I'm going to get into in a minute, but now let's get practical. So I want to give you some tools. I hope uh, that you're still, I can't see how many people are watching, uh, but I'm just going to assume that you still are. So I'm going to give you this. I'm going to give you some tools real quick. Follow me over here. These are some tools that I have found very useful. This book right here, Atomic Habits, now, I want to give a warning to you on this. Uh, with this book, it's got a lot of self-help, secular. He makes a lot of reference to, you know, our prehistoric ancestors and, you know, just a bunch of nonsense about, 
you know, Darwinian evolution and how it affects our brain. You just got to eat the meat, chew out, you know, spit out the bones. But this book has been very helpful for me in, in a practical way of how to actually change your habits. Uh, so Atomic Habits by James Clear. This is on Amazon. Uh, you can get it 15 bucks on Kindle. Paperback's $20. It's a pretty thick book and it's an easy read. I would highly, highly, highly recommend, recommend that book. Uh, second thing that I'm going to uh, steer you to, I think it went to the wrong one. Here it is. This is the assessment. Oh, man, come on. Michael Hyatt, what are you doing? Let's see. Let's Google it. Life. You can Google it, too. Life score assessment by Michael Hyatt. I do this every year. Uh, it's been very helpful in doing this every year to get a kind of a feel on where I'm at now. Here's why this is super beneficial. It takes you about five to 10 minutes, really short uh, for what information you get out of this. It, I mean, it's a really short amount of time to get good information. So when you click this, when you go to just Google Mike Life Score Assessment, Michael Hyatt, and you'll click Start Assessment. Now look at this. This is cool. You get to select which domains of your life you want to focus on and and it converts all of those things it, it, it takes what I like about this is it takes the immeasurable things like parental realm the intellectual realm the marital realm the vocational the financial physical all these things that it's hard to measure those things and it's hard to see like how much value do I place on those things because it's hard to measure those things accurately well He's come up with a really good way to make it quick and efficient, but to actually put on paper, here's where you rank. You know, at, at the end of it, it gives you this ring and it kind of shows you where you're weak at, where you're strong at. And it kind of gives you a baseline. This is why I like it. It gives you a baseline of where to start. You know, like I've always been strong with um, social. Uh, I've been strong with vocational. I've always been strong with financial things. But it did reveal to me some things that I was kind of feeling in my heart that I was weak parentally. I was weak uh, physically. That's whenever I started exercising. I was weak intellectually. I wasn't pushing myself as far as I, I really wanted to. And I, and I wouldn't have known that hadn't I uh, found this. So again, I'm going to put a link to all these in uh, this, this video's status. So on my Facebook, if you want more information on this just leave a comment down below private message me whatever you want to do so life score assessment by michael hyatt um just google that or you can find it on this website right here assessments.michaelhyatt.com great stuff great great stuff i sound like donald trump so continuing on this is just in that analysis mode we're, we're wanting to ask ourselves why we do what we do um here's some other practical things let me ask you this. Why do you get up when you get up? If you get up early, why? If you get up late, why? Uh, when you go to bed, when you do, why do you do that? You know, when you play the video games this long, that was personal, or whenever you uh, tend to find yourself doing this certain thing for this certain amount of time and this financial investment, you need to ask yourself why. I mean, of everything, like get a piece of paper out and do the hard work, spend 30 minutes, it's 30 minutes, which we're talking about time anyway. So get down and write down, you know, why do I do this? Why do I do that? And just ask yourself that question. And it's going to force you to deal with maybe some, some things you don't want to deal with that you wouldn't have otherwise done. Uncover the rock. See the cr creepy crawly things under places that you need to look and, and do some cleaning. Uh, Psalm chapter 90, verse 12, another one of my favorites personally is this. Uh, he says, teach me to number my days so that I may gain a heart of wisdom. Wisdom is gained just by realizing that our days are short. I mean, realizing that you're going to die one day. You're literally you, you and me, the guy who's talking. Like, I'm going to breathe my last breath one day and it's going to be unpleasant for me in that time. But I have no fear of death. But however, I'm not looking forward to my death. I don't know when my death is going to be, but I know this, it's coming. 
and more than likely it'll be sooner rather than later just simply because you know none of us want to think about our own death but david says god give me this wisdom that comes from counting my days asking yourself why taking inventory and then planning carefully well that's going to help you and i think that's going to help us obey the command that we find here in ephesians 5. now the next thing make new commitments and write them down once you get that baseline once you find out where you're weak at you need to make a commitment i'm going to address that i'm fine here i don't need to worry about this area i don't need to worry about that area i'm fine i need to focus on these things and that's going to lead you into some places where we're going to go next look at what he says in verse 16. Uh, he says after saying not as unwise but wise making the best use of the time now some theologians have wrestled with what he means by the time is he talking about the last days is he talking about the day of judgment is he talking about uh the tribulation period when satan is unleashed on earth and havoc is chaos is going everywhere and you know COVID 19 who cares about that we're worried about demons prowling the streets well i don't really think he's talking about that i think he's talking about the same thing that james is talking about and what we just covered in james chapter 4 he's talking about this idea of self-indulgence i mean you got to think two things were happening in rome at this time the incoming platoons of of basically persecution on christians but also just at the same time the same time there was this constant provoking from the culture live live yolo man just be indulgent eat all you want drink all you want have sex all you want do all that you want because you only live once and it's short well that's dumb and it's not wise but then there's also the coming reality that christians who tr truly desire to live godly in christ jesus will be persecuted there'll be hard times so that's why he's saying look make most use of these last days this is the last this is the last span of history you and i all oh, this is good you and i are living literally right now are living in the last two bookends of human history like the only thing left to happen in human history is the return of christ that's it i mean beforehand there was the, all this stuff about the kings raising up kings then we need a new king we need a better king then we need the messiah waiting on the messiah we got the messiah now what he's coming back we're waiting for just that one event and then everything's made new after that these are the last days that's why paul is saying don't be unwise but be wise and make most use of them i don't know why i'm doing this all the time so Let's look at the Greek again, shall we? Follow me over here, would you? So whenever he says make most use, when he says make most use, this is the literal word that we see. It is this word right here. Exagorazo, to redeem, buy back. That's literally what redeem means. When Christ bought you and me, he redeemed us from the curse of the law by becoming a curse you see what's going on here this idea of redemption is exchange substitution there's potential on both sides right there's a potential to waste and then there's a potential to redeem so you've got to make a choice and right now you're making a choice to continue to waste or to purchase back to continue to waste or purchase back there is no there's no balance of these two. It's one or the other. You know, when you're in time, you're either making the most use of it for good or you are wasting it. You're just totally just wasting it for no good and for no apparent reason. He's saying, redeem. Redeem the time. Redeem the time. Buy it back. Why? Because the days are evil. They're evil. Work diligently. An old Chinese proverb says this, opportunity has a forelock so you can seize it when you meet it but once it is passed you can't seize it again in other words opportunity is right here right now and once you go past that opportunity there's no way to go back in it there's no way to change your mind i mean that opportunity is 
either seized upon or you've missed it altogether. Uh, the word opportunity literally is, comes from the Latin, and it means to go toward the port, to actually take advantage of good winds and good tide patterns uh, to get you into the right port that you want to land at. That's where opportunity comes from, and you've got to make the most of it. Uh, it's fitting. It's, it's tailored correctly for what you're aiming to do. And so, friends, we have an opportunity right now, right now, to make the most of our time. For what? Well, what is the chief end of man? It's to glorify God and enjoy Him forever. How do we do that? We learn more about Him. We learn to worship Him more out of that, out of that love for Him. We develop genuine love for others that he loves and we cultivate that uh, we provide for our children we provide for our household especially as men because if we don't do that we're worse off than unbelievers uh, whenever we are in the marketplace we're working hard as for the lord you remember that not just to please our masters but actually for the lord when we work so when we work we work hard when we're off we're off you know, and when we're home, we're home. And when we're mom, we're mom. When we're dad, we're dad. Why? For the glory of God. Whenever we're called to be patient, we got to be patient. Make the most of it. And whenever there's a time to be impatient, be patient anyway. Make the most of it. Don't give opportunity to the enemy. Give opportunity for the glory of God. So remember, I think that this has, it, it tips its hat, it lends its hand to what James was saying again in chapter four. Don't be self-indulgent. Right now, as I'm, I'm sure you've seen the meme out of 15 billion memes that you've seen on social media by now. One of the most prevalent memes right now is your grandfathers and grand, your grandparents and great-grandparents had to go to war in times like these, but all you have to do is sit at home and watch Netflix. You'll be okay. Well, I get it, but still, it points to the culture that we're in. You know, there's always this plea to relax, prop your feet up, binge watch. We don't have any commercials anymore. Now you can just click a button and watch episode after episode after episode. And the next thing you know, something good has been turned into something evil because you've wasted time or you've overslept. That's been mine. I haven't been getting up as early, near as early as I like to, but because I've been wasting time. I've been taking it too lax. We've all got to repent in our own special, unique areas. So here's some practical helps as we draw this thing to a close. He says, the days are evil, so therefore, if you're going to go backwards, the days are evil, so therefore, act as wise, not as unwise people, making the most of the time, and make sure that you carefully, carefully, carefully watch how you live. So I'm going to take you to another screen. And uh, this is where we're going to be kind of landing it here. So I'm going to take you to this screen over here and show you some more tools that I've found really helpful. Now, you're going to have to go and do the research on your own. I had to do my own homework. You're going to have to do yours. There's no such thing as free homework. <laughs> so let's go over here. Uh, you need to look at this. Michael Hyatt's got a lot of good resources on self-development. Not self-improvement per se, but self-development. Uh, to setting goals, you got to make sure that you make it fit to this specific framework. He's got this uh, smarter framework that you need to follow. I'm not going to go all through it today, but making goals is not just as simple as saying, I want to be more thin. I want to read my Bible more. I mean, think about it. You know, if I were to ask many of you that are probably watching, hey, have you been praying enough? You know what your answer would be. Not enough. Well, how much is enough? You see, you got, don't leave it too loose. You got to give it some definition. You know, that's kind of the goal, uh, no pun intended, that Michael Hyde, here, Hyde has here about framing up your goals that give you uh, a good lens to look through. Specific, measurable, actionable. It's risky. It's got to be time keyed, exciting, and it's relevant uh, to your season of life. So go look at that on your own. You can Google simply. Uh, the Smarter Framework for Goal Setting, Michael Hyatt, whatever you want to do. Again, I'm going to leave links in the description. You can also do this. This is something I recently picked up this year. I used to use Michael Hyatt's Full Focus Planner. I know I wasn't always a planner guy, but I think that I have some attention deficit tendency, so I need a planner. 
I really do. And I'm going to argue that everybody needs a planner for real. The more free time, the more, uh, let's say this, the more freedom you have with your job, especially the more you need a planner because the more freedom you have, the more of a tendency you have to use it uh, not so rightly. So if you look at this, the bullet journal is a little bit of a learning curve. It took me about three weeks to really get it all nailed down, but the simplicity of it, I love it. Uh, just to kind of show you some things that, that attracted me to it was just the fact that I could put in my tasks, but I could also journal at the same time. You know, I could put in some thoughts like, you know, if something's not a task, you know, if I don't have a specific task to write down, you know, I've got it right here. You know, I've got, I've got tasks on this side, but then I've got quiet time journal stuff on this side and some thought about some, some new things coming up about maybe doing some drive in preaching Easter Sunday. Woo! But see, I've got some notes, you know, I've got some notes over here that when I go back and look at these, I'm going to be able to see some hard work that I did uh, with God. But then I'm also going to see some tasks that I got completed. And let me tell you, there's something fancy, something cool about marking out that task when you're done. It feels so great. So I'm going to take you back over here. Uh, it, it gives you your own key, but the what I love about the bullet journal is it allows you to uh, make your own keys. Like, you don't have to use just these. You can use whatever you want to use. Uh, you know, it also helps you kind of give a key for events. You can write down things that are going on, things that affected your day, and even notes. Uh, but, man, I'm telling you, if you, I dare you, well, maybe not. It may not be the best thing for you. If you go on YouTube and you type in bullet journaling, especially you females, <laughs> there's some crazy stuff out there. Like, they'll take, like, purple markers, yellow markers, lime green markers, not so lime green markers, just off-white markers, and they'll make all kinds of special pages about it. And I'm like, yeah, I ain't doing all that. I just, you know... I want to have something that I, I can take with me and keep with me, and it's relatively simple, not so complex. You can do whatever you want with it, though. Uh, this guy sells his own bullet journals, and they're cheap. You can buy. What I did is I went to Amazon and bought a moleskin uh, book. They're kind of pricey, but, man, they're super high quality. Highly recommend it. Here's another thing. This uh, I talked about this app on my Sunday sermon, Focus Me. If you're on your laptop, if you work from a computer and you have the ability to install something, I'd highly recommend you buy this. It's not its not expensive and it's super effective. Um, you know, this if you go to focusme.com, again, I'm going to put all the links in the description, but if you go to focusme.com, you're going to see this blog. If you go to blog, I'm going to walk you through it real quick so you, sh so you can see how you can find it. Literally, I just went to focusme.com, went to blog, and look here. First one on the left, 27 pro productivity increasing mind hacks to get your work done while being stuck at home. I read this the other day. I'm not a big, uh, I'm not a big blog reader. I get these emails on my email every day, not because I wanted to, but just because I got the service and, you know, they spam you sometimes. But, dude, I read this article in my truck the other day waiting on somebody, and they were really helpful. Some of them I already knew, but a lot of them I didn't. And they were really helpful because they were tailored specifically for this time. So that's a great tool is focusme.com. If you want something really specific about the coronavirus stuff right now, working from home, focusme.com, click blog and go to the 27 product productivity hacks uh, that you can find. I'm telling you, there's some good stuff in there. Now I'm going to give you some of them. I did kind of borrow from them just how they worded it, but a lot of these things I knew myself that I'm going to give you. And I, again, if you want these sermon notes, uh, I can send them to you in an email. I can send them to you in Messenger. Just comment below if you want my, my personal study notes for this lesson that I put together. I can send them to you however you like. Just let me know. I just need you to let me know that. So if you're a procrastinator, which these two kind of go hand in hand. If you're a procrastinator slash lazy person, well, here's one thing that I found that helps me. You ready? 
I don't know if you got this or not, but you just need one of these bad boys. And here's, I'm going to, uh, real time, you ready? So let's say I've got to pressure wash the back porch and I've been putting it off for, I don't know, two years or something. <laughs> just <laughs> set a timer. You, you just, you don't feel like doing it. You know you need to do it. You got the time to do it. There's no excuses. The only person that's going to know you didn't do it was you and your spouse, right? So what you need to do, here's the hack. Set a timer for 15 minutes. Your timer is set for 15 minutes. Go do it. And whatever you get done in 15 minutes is what you got done. You know, and then you have this relief of saying, well, I did it for 15 minutes and I got as much done as I could. And then you could look at your wife or your husband and go, especially for pressure washing, you look at your wife and go, well, that's as much as I can get done in 15 minutes. I'm going back to doing something I want to do. But typically, here's why it's a hack. Typically, in 15 minutes, once you've been doing it for 15 minutes, you get in a groove. You're just in a groove, and there's nobody that can break that groove, and so you're just going to stick with it, you know, unless somebody interrupts you or something or something catches on fire. I don't know. Another way to look at it is like a stairway in darkness. So, like, you step on one step in darkness. You can't see out in front of you, right? But you can just see, you can see one step at a time. Well, just step on one step. We're worrying about the task list that's unending, right? Just what's the what's the next thing that needs to get done right now? Just do that. For ADHD people, that's what you need to do. What's the next thing? Just do that. Don't worry about anything else. Don't don't start cleaning the kitchen and then run off into the bedroom and oh I gotta clean here and oh I went into the bathroom to get this rag and now I gotta clean the bathroom. <gasps> Just go back to the kitchen and clean the kitchen. Get the kitchen done. And if you're exhausted after you clean the kitchen, guess what? You cleaned the kitchen. You got something done. Take heart. Make artificial deadlines, you know, and, and way to make your make yourself accountable is to write it down. You know, write it down and, and say, this is the deadline. For me, I put three big squares on the top of each day. The three big squares and the rest of my task, I put them as dots. And the reason I do that is because I want three big things that I need to get done. If I don't get these done, that's not a good day for me. That means that I failed, typically, and I don't always complete them. Don't ask me how I know. Give yourself a small reward. You know, give yourself, dangle the carrot in front of you. You know, this kind of, I borrowed this from that habit book that I was telling you about, Atomic Habits. See, this is really helpful. You know, if you know you need to do something every day that you don't want to do, like laundry, you know, instead of making one big laundry day that's just overwhelming, how about let's do laundry every day, small incremental pieces, you know? And I have to walk by my washer and dryer every day that I walk in the house. And every day I leave the house, I got to walk by them. It's not like I don't see it, right? <clears throat> so what I do is I tell myself, here's one thing I want to do. I know that I want to, I don't know, play Fortnite with, with Ethan and my brothers and all that. So I want to do that, but I don't want to do laundry. So here's the bait. All right, stick something in the washer or stick something in the dryer or make sure that I unload the basket out of our bathroom into the sorted stuff in my wash in my washroom. Make sure I do something laundry related that's actually productive, and then I have the freedom to go do what I want to do next. Another little hack that you might want to try. If you're an overworker right now, especially in this quarantine, you got to draw a line. If you're working from home, which I have the luxury of coming up to my office, so I have a clear line. When As soon as I start my truck and I leave my office, I'm done. Now, I still get text messages and phone calls, but that's another thing. But, but in my mind, I shut off. My work is shut off. At home, it's not that easy. So one of the things that you can do, get dressed in the morning like you would, get up at the usual time that you would get up, do your usual morning routine, do your work in a specific area. Make that area your work area. Nobody comes in here. Nobody disturbs me. This is my work, right? This is my work area. And when you leave that work area, it's like a mental shutdown. You know, you're you're off. And then you can go into being, you know, who you need to be at home, what you need to be at home. That way you can still be honoring to the Lord in your work, but you can also honor your wife, your husband, and your kids at home. If, again, ADHD people make a list, 
Bullet Journal. If you need more info on this, bulletjournal.com. He's got fantastically edited and published YouTube videos that are just, they're amazing. And they're so easy to follow. Uh, I just love the Bullet Journal. Um, one thing gets done or nothing gets done. That's what you need to remember. One thing gets done or nothing gets done. Um, another thing is the power of ritual. You know, I've got a morning ritual and I got an evening ritual. And you, you do too. You just may not realize it. But look into those, peer into those, and see how you can kind of edit those to fit some things that you want to do. Like, you know, I'm, I'm intermittent fasting until about 3 o'clock in the afternoon just about every day. One of the benefits that I see is that intermittent fasting in link with exercise, cardio exercise, tends to be more effective in fat burning. So guess what I'm trying to do in my ritual? If I can get up early enough in the morning and hit the heavy bag that I just hung up in my garage, that's more effective toward a goal that I have in fitness-related stuff. So I can edit my ritual for now in the COVID-19 stuff to benefit me in my fat burning stuff when I could be making excuses like, well, I'm quarantined at home and the gym's closed, so I guess I can't exercise. Eh. Nope, I got everything that I need to do. The Pomodoro method. I may be overwhelming you, but I hope not. The Pomodoro method, that's what Focus Me, the application uses. Um, it goes back to that old Pomodoro clock, the timer that you use to cook eggs with or whatever. You know, you just, you turn it, you let it go, and once that clicks, you got you got a break. You know, you can set four Pomodoros, 15 minutes each, 15 minutes of work each. But then every time that 15 minute timer goes off, you get five minutes worth of break to do whatever you want: Facebook, social media, watch TV for five minutes, or YouTube for five minutes, or whatever. But you give yourself breaks, small breaks, 15 minutes of work, small break, 15 minutes of work, small break, 15 minutes of work, small break, and then after you've done four, five, six, seven, whatever. However many Pomodoros, you can Google that too, Pomodoro method. Once you do however many Pomodoros you want to do, guess what you can do? Take a big break. Take a 45-minute YouTube social media spree. Go shopping on Amazon. All you want, and you probably won't get it as soon as you would like because of COVID-19. But at least you get a break. <laughs> you get a break. And last thing. Last thing, and this really has a lot to do with, I'm going to try to find it. Okay, this is one of them. That was my task list for Tuesday, right? Super long, right? A lot, it was just a lot of small things, like little gnats in your eyes, like, man, just get out of my way. I got bigger things to do, but they had to get done. So when it comes to small things, this is again why you got to write it down, if you write it down, write down all the small things. I mean, every little small thing. Like, I had to send a text message to someone yesterday. Guess what I wrote down? Text person. Uh, I had to create a graphic for this Facebook Live video. Guess what? Make graphic. Uh, complete purchase orders for the church of purchases that I've made in the past three weeks. Guess what I wrote down? Complete purchase orders. Write them all down. That way you have a list and your brain is empty and freed up to think on what you need to get done, right? Write them all down and then batch them. So say three o'clock is when I'm going to do all those small little gnat tasks. That's when I'm going to do all those tasks that just, they're quick and they're over and they're easy, but they just need to get done. I'm going to sit down at three o'clock, give myself 45 minutes, run through those, get them off, mark them off. I'm done. Done. Now I can go back to what I really need to be doing, or I can go back to free time. Extremely helpful. Have I mentioned the bullet journal is extremely helpful? How long will this time last, though, is the question. How long will this quarantine last? We don't know. Looks like April 30th tends to be the kind of new deadline. It used to be Easter, but we don't know. But we know this. You've got time. And now you now you need now you have the the equipment to do what you need to do. Uh, you know that you need to take stock and inventory. Ask why you do what you currently do, and then you need to remind yourself: I need to be looking carefully. I need to be living with intentionality. I don't need to need to be living loosey goosey with all this stuff. You know, I got too much garbage right now. I need to let some of it go. This is the time to do it, man. This is a good time to hit the reset button. 
this is a good time to just go all right tap out try again reset do that that i really do think that's one of the many reasons god has allowed this to happen to us super crazy stupid busy americans um you know he's taking off the proverbial badge of honor of saying well i've just got so much to do i've got so much to do and now you don't now you don't now's the time to be saying well you used to say i wish i could study the bible more but i'm so busy are you now sarcasm included for free uh you're not so busy now honestly in real talk you're not too busy to study scripture now especially now uh you're not too busy to learn a new doctrine about god about the church um you're not too busy to write about something you've been meaning to write about you you're not too busy anymore you've got more free time uh, you've got more money now too if you haven't been going around like you you're used to doing this is a time to you know, revisit Dave Ramsey, for goodness sake, and look at putting a budget together. Because guess what? It takes time to put a budget together, and it takes time to meet about money with your spouse. And guess what you have more of now? Time! you got time. So take your time. Do what you need to do. Um, hug the cactus. Eat the elephant one bite at a time. Take the time and use it wisely hey i just wanted to introduce you to something before we go uh, we'll be starting this new series sunday it's called the real war and what we're going to be discussing is the war that is unseen it's the spiritual realm uh, it kind of does bleed into what we're talking about right now and that is uh you know how we use our time and and what that time is used for either either evil or good uh, so this is going to be a very i think it's going to be a very helpful series i think it's going to be very enlightening we are going to talk about satan demons a little bit of angels a whole lot about god definitely a whole lot about jesus especially as easter is coming um i don't want to make this formal announcement but if you're still here on facebook guess what you'll be a part of the select few they get to hear it first uh, i ordered something on ebay today one of the last ones that they had talked to a guy in harrisburg that's been doing this uh, we can get an FM transmitter with a lapel microphone uh, trying to get help with uh, Jordan Bond about getting some scaffolding and try to do some drive-in church. Central Baptist in Jonesboro is going to be doing it. Uh, they had to kind of get unique with how they did it. I talked with some of their IT guys on how they're doing it, and we're going to have to do it a little bit differently. But I'm really excited about that. Uh, one of the pastors that's been doing this in Harrisburg said, uh, that their attendance increased uh, and had seen more first-time people than ever before. And uh, some other good things have come out of that. So I think this is a good time talking about opportunity. This is a good time to reach some people that we might not have reached had this coronavirus outbreak not happened. So if you would pray for that, I mean that. Please pray that God would logistically bless it. Um, I'm telling you, electronically, tech-wise, things want to go bad on Sunday mornings always. So just pray for that. And uh, this looks to be pretty simple to do, but we'll need some help. So those of you that are watching, if you want to help, let me know. Hit me up down in the comments. Send me a private message, whatever you're comfortable doing. If you got my phone number, text me and let me know you want to help. We don't need a whole lot of people. We can't have a whole lot of people helping, but it's definitely something we're going to try to do, uh, weather permitting especially. I'm going to end this video with the bumper video, kind of giving you more of an idea of where this new series is going. And after this, uh, I will be signing off to you guys. Thanks for tuning in. I got my D group meeting with me in about five minutes.
So I hope that uh, you're excited about seeing that. I know I'm excited about preaching. It's a little intimidating, to be honest, to preach through some of this. It's loaded with spiritual warfare. I've already seen my fair share of it already. Not looking forward to what's coming out of it either. But that's where you can pray for me as well. Please do. I welcome all the prayer I can get. I need it. I hope that you guys have enjoyed this. I hope it hadn't been too long. I hope it's been very practical. That's what I really wanted to do is give you some practical tips, all the things that I know and that I use. I wanted to share with you. I love to share those things. Anything that works, I love to share. Uh, so again, tune in this Sunday uh, live on Facebook, and we'll be going through our new series, The Real War, starting in Ephesians chapter 6 on what the war is. It's not physical. It is spiritual. So I'll be talking to you guys then. God bless you very much, and still can't wait to see you guys face to face. Desperately miss you. Looks like we're going to be, Lord willing, about four more weeks of this mess. So try to find ways to connect with each other, would you? And uh, reach out and phone call somebody, text somebody that you hadn't texted in a while. Check on them. Ask them how they're doing. Ask them deep questions about how their soul is. And if they're lonely, pray for them. Would you do that? Bless you guys. See you then.